What's up tech fans, Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow where we're taking a break from gaming again to bring you guys another accessory review. This time a keyboard, the Lobera Supreme Illuminated Gaming Keyboard from Tesoro. Now for those of you guys that haven't heard of Tesoro, they're still a pretty relatively young company as far as gaming accessories go. They've only been around since 2011, so only about three years old, and they're based in the US. And it's a bunch of gaming enthusiasts that want to make gaming accessories for avid PC gamers. So we're going to take a look at their latest keyboard, the Lobera, and take a look at how it performs, how it looks, and basically just let you know whether or not it's worth your dollar. So let's check it out today on Tech of Tomorrow. So this is the Lobera Supreme. For those of you curious about the name, most accessory companies have a habit of using a theme for naming their devices, and Tesoro's approach with their keyboards is to name them all after legendary swords. In this case, it's the Lobera, aka the Wolf Slayer, which was wielded by Saint Ferdinand III of Castile in the early 13th century. So now that we've had your little history lesson out of the way, let's talk about the actual Lobera keyboard. Before we get into all the nitty gritty performance stuff, let's talk aesthetics. The Lobera Supreme is a mid-sized keyboard with a relatively simple and straightforward design as far as gaming keyboards go, with the obvious exception of the fact that it does have illuminated keys, which personally I really prefer. I don't need a keyboard to be flashy, I just need it to perform. Despite its relatively compact size, the Lobera is a surprisingly hefty and solidly built feeling keyboard. You'll notice that on the bottom it has legs that adjust for three separate heights, and the legs themselves are rubber coated instead of just plain plastic, so it's going to hold its ground a lot better in your desktop and not easily shift around so much. As far as the illumination options go, there's a large variety of colors to choose from using the RGB scale. It's not in the millions, but it covers all the important bases that you'll actually need. You can even adjust multiple lighting settings, like having it pulsate, or only light up those keys most traditionally associated with gaming, like WASD and the number keys. The only aspect that bothers me a little bit are the side lights, which on their own do look great, but they always add a violetish hue to things. So you won't notice it very much with red or violet lights, but if you're going for green or yellow or just plain white, you'll notice the sides take on a different color, something you may or may not like. Personally, it bothers me a little bit. Now let's take a look at performance. Now to begin with, the Lobera Supreme comes in four different switch types, so this isn't one of those situations where they're all red or they're all brown. It's up to you and your personal preference to choose between red, brown, black, and blue. Now for those of you that don't know the difference between switches, here's just a really basic rundown of them. Red switches have the lowest resistance of them and are really popular in a lot of gaming keyboards because you can just rapidly press different keys and they'll all read. Brown switches are the second most common, which offer a little more resistance but also have a tactile response, so every time you press a key you really feel it. Now black and blue switches are less commonly seen in gaming keyboards and more popular amongst typists, but they still see some use. Black switches offer the highest resistance of the whole group, so you really have to press down for every key press. Whereas blue switches are still a mid-ground, kind of like the brown switches, but they also add on this really loud clickety-clack sound whenever you press something, which I personally really like. It's a good midway between typing and gaming, and I like the sound that it makes, but if you have any roommates, family members, or coworkers, they might go a little insane from all the noise. Now it's worth noting that even though it uses the same color designations, the Lobera Supreme does not use the industry standard Cherry MX switches, but rather another brand that, in all honesty, I can barely tell the difference from. Every now and then I might notice that it feels a little more resistant, but never enough to really impact my sense of control. Now as far as special features go, the Lobera covers a lot of the popular basics we see in a lot of gaming keyboards. The F1 through F6 keys also act as media control options. You can switch between 6 key and N key rollover, and the keyboard has built-in pass-throughs to hook up two more USB powered devices, an audio jack and mic input, and even a DC in jack to charge or power some other devices, and the keyboard does include a USB to DC cable to open up some more options for that. The Libera also has three customizable macro buttons located right below the spacebar at the bottom of the keyboard. Now three macro buttons is a little low compared to some of the competing gaming keyboards out there, but with the ability to quickly choose between five different gaming profiles using the F8 through F12 keys, you really have up to 15 different macro keys to program, which is more than enough for most gamers. Now you can program these macros one of two ways. You can either go the long traditional route of using the Lobera software and take time setting them up and programming them, or you can use the keyboard's instant record option by hitting this little hidden record button on the upper right side of the keyboard, blending in with the caps lock light and others, as well as another 
another slightly hidden switch that turns on and off gaming mode. Recording with the instant record button is a lot easier and honestly much more preferable over using Lobera software, which is really my biggest complaint regarding this keyboard. The Lobera interface is just not that user friendly and not very well explained. In fact, it even took me a long time to really figure out how to change the color on my keyboard because there is no color button or a button that shows the current color I'm using, it's instead this random little silver triangle without any explanation. So I just really feel like Lobera could have done a better job making it much more user friendly. Now one last important thing to cover about how this keyboard performs is that it is a true anti-ghosting keyboard. Some keyboards will say they're anti-ghosting, but it's only that it covers certain specific, really common button combinations. Whereas this one, if you have the N key rollover activated, you could fall asleep at your computer, land your face right on the keyboard, and it will read every single input, which is really important when you're playing some games and you have to try and do 10 different things at once. So overall, I really like the Lobera Supreme Gaming Keyboard. The software interface could be better, and I am still a little bothered by those side lights being a different color, but outside of that, everything else is solid. At a common price tag of $139.99, this is a great option for those of you that want an RGB keyboard with a large variety of colors, not to mention stable performance, useful features, your choice of switch preference, or just a keyboard that just looks great. I really recommend it. Well, that was our review of the Lobera Supreme Illuminated Gaming Keyboard. If you want to grab one for yourself, we do have a link posted in the description. They're a bit hard to grab at the moment, but once they're back in stock, you can check them out through there. Now, if you guys enjoyed this vid, please make sure to let us know by hitting that like button. And if you're not a subscriber yet, then you should be, because we're always pumping out more content. Until next time, I'm Kevin for Tech of Tomorrow, and we'll see you later.